Welcome back to LearnPiezo.org, a free online class about piezo electricity. And today, uh, we're going to be continuing on a new topic. And so we're going to start lecture four. And lecture four has to do with, um, you know, microscopic. origins of piezo electricity and in this uh, topic we're going to be we're going to describe uh, how does piezo electric piezo electricity come about and what are the different microscopic uh, you know details regarding uh, these materials so we just want to start out and point out first that a piezoelectric material it has to be a polar material and this means it has a spontaneous polarization so what do we mean by that let's draw a really simple one-dimensional uh, compound And in this compound, let's say it keeps going down and it keeps going down this way. And now we specify the distance between each of these is d, and this between this and this is also d, although it looks a little longer, but bear with me. And now we want to draw polarization vectors. So let me uh, give this example. If we have this positive and this negative, we know again the dielectric or the, the polarization vector goes from the negative to the positive. So we have a polarization considering those two atoms. Then we have another polarization going this way. And we have another one going this way. And it'll continue like this. So actually, uh, the net polarization or the spontaneous polarization is found by adding all the polarization vectors. So we can just write a pseudo notation, you know, add, however many they are, you know, add all these polarization vectors, and then they're equal, if they equal zero, then the material is a centri, centro symmetric, you know, centro symmetric with regards to the charge distribution. And therefore, we have no no piezo electricity. So most materials, they do not have piezo electricity. And uh, this is mainly because they do not have uh, a spontaneous polarization. You add all these polarization vectors. You know, obviously in a real atom, we have a three D structure. Uh, but still, adding all the polarization vectors, even in that three D structure, will get a zero polarization in the end because all of them will cancel. See these these two cancel out and these two cancel out. Or you can think of these two, they cancel out. So now uh, if we think about uh, a piezoelectric material and compare that, well piezoelectric materials uh, have a polarization at the unit cell level. So for example, uh, let's take a common uh, piezoelectric material, famous one, barium titanate. It's a perovskite structure. So basically the structure can come in different forms, but we'll first start by describing its cubic form. And the cubic form of this material, obviously, uh, we have we first start with the drawing the cell and we have these dimensions a b and uh, c so in this sense a equals b equals c and now let's start drawing the atoms so we have on every face we have an oxygen atom and i'm not going to draw this this is not a see through so oxygen, I'll use the colors to correspond. 
then we have on every corner we have a barium atom and in the middle uh, which I'll draw in purple you have a titanium and all draws dotted obviously you can't see the middle if it's a uh, we have a titanium so basically we have an oxygen on every side and with every and there's six so there's six oxygens but there's only uh, six sides so it's and it's one half so basically there are three oxygens and the titanium atom is completely inside the cell so there's just one titanium atom and the barium atom there are eight of them for the eight corners on the cell but they are in the corner so they only share one eighth of the cell so there's one barium so in this case uh, again if we add all the polarization vectors we draw you know titanium is going to be four plus this is going to be minus two so that's my mix minus six plus four this is going to be uh, plus two Obviously, we know that from the periodic table as well. <laughs> but it's nice if you forget one, you can remember the other. If you remember the other ones, everyone knows oxygen. Uh, titanium is a translation metal, and barium, you can just figure that out. So now uh, we understand that this does not have spontaneous polarization. So it cannot be piezoelectric. So let's take a look at the other case. So I said this is the cubic form, right? There's another form of the piezoelectric material known as the uh, tetragonal form. Based on the thermodynamic stability of the different forms, the different pressure, temperature, you know, and those conditions we get the different forms of these materials so what is tetragonal? Tetragonal is kind of like rectangular rectangular on one on one side and basically you remember the different uh, lengths of the unit cell A, B, and C in this case A equals B which is not equal C so C is going to be the long side. So we have a, basically a structure like this. It's going to be a little bit longer. And actually, this is extremely exaggerated because the ratio is actually from A to B, A to A to C. You know, because A equals B, so might as well just call this A. Um, basically, the ratio of C to A equals 1.01. .01 or approximately this length. So it's not like it's like 1.5 or something that it's still going to be this tall, which this is approximately tw this length over here is, is A. So we have A here, A here. This is approximately um, this 1% longer. This, this, this length C is 1% longer. So let's now take a look at how the uh, atoms are situated in the structure. So let me draw that again. So we draw a rectangle and uh, I'm going to draw it on the side view. We're going to have oxygens at every face. And similarly we're going to have a barium atom at every edge. And we're going to have a titanium atom near the middle. So it's basically the same thing, the same shape, the same kind of locations, but they're going to be a little bit, uh, they're going to be a little bit skewed. They're not going to be in the same exact position. They're perturbed. That's the word, perturbed. So let's draw a side view. If you draw the side view of the cube, we have one atom here, one atom here, one atom here, uh, like that. Uh, basically, these are the corner barium items and this is the oxygen atom sitting on the top and this is the oxygen atom sitting on the top uh, so it's kind of a a little bit skewed but the main atoms which are going to be uh, changing are the middle atoms
So we draw, if we draw a side view, uh, we have these three uh, oxygen atoms. Normally, uh, let me draw a cube because it's a little bit easier to draw uh, just for illustration. Normally we had uh, this atom, this oxygen, well these are not oxygen, sorry. So we have these four oxygens sitting around the circumference. And this is what I'm drawing, actually. I'm just telling you what I'm drawing. And uh, and we have the one titanium atom in the middle. And these are the ones which are going to be disturbed and perturbed in the tetragonal phase of the piezoelectric. The rest of the, you know, the barrier atoms are still in the corner. There's still oxygen at the top. There's still oxygen at the bottom. But these are the ones which are going to be perturbed. So that's why I'm going to draw them. So we have four sides, right? We can kind of only see three sides of this picture. So we're going to have this middle line. Let's draw the middle line of the tetragonal cell. And we're going to have the oxygen atom here and oxygen atom here. This is the oxygen atom on the face that we're looking at. This is the oxygen atom on the other side. So we kind of could draw like that, and then it would be here. Uh, but since we're going to only drawing it 2D, uh, we kind of see it on the side. And this, the other one is right there. And the titanium atom is displaced up. So the titanium is plus 4, so we have plus here, and you have minus there. So what's the polarization? This is spontaneous polarization. So this is how it happens, that the titanium atom gets is thermodynamically favorable for it to not be in the middle position, the very, very middle of the position of the cube. So when it changes from the middle of the position of the cube and it moves up, it moves up and the oxygens are also, they also correspondingly, they move down a little bit. So based on this uh, model, we can get a polarization in the material. And the polarization is actually essential uh, that that a polarization exists in the material for us to get Peel's electricity and that will be a little more clear uh, down the line but this is important to remember no, po no polarization no piezoelectricity no spontaneous polarization no piezoelectricity uh, and we'll continue uh, this topic in the next video thanks for watching